until the day I came here, I've been in Düsseldorf all my life. Growing up in Germany with a Nigerian father and a German mother was kind of special. My childhood was, was nice, full of football, uh, full of love, and uh, that's why I think I'm very blessed with my childhood. Anywhere my father took us to, we always had a ball with us. So Already with one year old, I started to kick the ball and then really entered a, a club with four. Uh, it's called Flinger 08. Yeah, from there I went to the first bigger club, Fortuna Düsseldorf. Yeah, the biggest club in Düsseldorf. As a young boy, you know, as a young goalkeeper, it was big interest already because I played with my elder brother together. He was from 97, I'm from 99. So uh, I started already playing with the bigger boys in Fortuna Düsseldorf as a five-year-old. So my father helped me a lot with going to practice, coming back home, you know. So. He also put in a lot of work, you know, so without him it wouldn't be that easy. From Fortuna to Borussia Mönchengladbach, then I played there for three years. With eight I went there, till my 11th, then almost my whole life at Bayer Leverkusen, seven years. So till the under 19th I played with Bayer Leverkusen. Yeah, we were I think one of the best youth teams in Europe. I still have a lot of Golden Gloves trophies in my, in my home in Germany from the youth times and uh, yeah, it was a nice time. Yeah, I met my friend Daniel, he's my manager right now. He also thought it's the best for me to leave Leverkusen because even if you're a top player in Leverkusen, in the youth, it's not easy to get from the under-19 to the professionals, you know, because there's no second team. So we said the best is when I go to Düsseldorf, so I have more chances to practice with the first team in Fortuna Düsseldorf. And yeah, it was a good time. It's my home club, you know. I grew up there, it's my city, it's my town. And uh, it was amazing, especially when I started to sit on the bench in the Bundesliga. And yeah, then Van Steen gave me the, sh uh, the chance to play here. And I think I took it quite good. As a club, it's, it's the most uh, original club in the Netherlands. The oldest professional soccer club in the Netherlands. It's, it's got an original, unique uh, side to it. Uh, we were the first with a game against an English side. We were the first with football for women. We were the first with wearing numbers on the back. So we were always ahead of development. We were a top team at the start of the 20th century. We were champions in like 1909, 1911-12, something like that. We were champions of the Netherlands in 1995, but then there was this big club coming up with a big stadium in Rotterdam, Feyenoord. So they overtook our position. So not, we're not the top team in Rotterdam anymore, but still we, uh, we are a team in the Eredivisie after a few bad years. And people love Sparta. The whole country loves Sparta. Once you've, you've passed the gates of Sparta, I, I immediately felt at home like. So there was no doubt. Uh, my father even said, well, you should also go to, to a Feyenoord home game and see the difference is between the two teams. Because he said, let's be honest, they've got a bigger stadium and they're more impressive. And, uh, but, so I went there once. And that was, believe it or not, that was the, the, the derby, Feyenoord Sparta. And final was leading 1-0, and that was 19, I think, 60. And, and about 10 minutes before the game would have been being finished, Sparta equalized, and we stand like, yes! And then, that's when I realized I've made my choice. Now, from now on, nothing can stop me from being a Sparta supporter. They call Sparta a family club. A lot of uh, women, kids, uh, whole families, from father to son, from mother to daughter, they travel to Sparta to see Sparta every game. It's, it's an explosive atmosphere. You had to be, let's call it, a free spirit. 
to become a Sparta supporter. You might even say Sparta supporters are pretty stubborn in a way that you have to fight for for a club and you know it's not the best team in the Netherlands and you're always fighting the rivalries and they want many more prizes than, than Sparta but still it's your club and uh, no matter what happens. Yeah, on Sunday was uh, was great. Was was awesome the way the fans uh, welcomed us here at Het Kasteel. Come on, Bayern Rotterdam! Come on, Bayern Rotterdam! Come on, Bayern Rotterdam! I think this is what what we and especially myself play for for the fans, and uh, yeah, these are the most beautiful moments of the season. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, as I said, this is what we play for and when you see all the fire and all the love from the fans, you know, it motivates a lot. If you had to tell them something, if you imagine there were 10 fans in front of you now, what would you tell them? That I really appreciate them and I love them from the bottom of my heart. I think the biggest strength for him is that he plays with heart. I, I think you have to kill him before he got changed on the on the pitch, you know. When when he plays for a club, he plays with a complete heart for this club. He gives everything for this club and for his team. My goodness, I, I love the man. He's he's a fantastic bloke. And he's got all the features and characteristics that a good goalkeeper should have. He's the boss in this fifty meter in this area. He's the boss more than before. Yes, he has his natural presence, you know. He's an athlete, uh, you name it. He's, he's popular with the fans, immensely popular with the fans. I think he could be one of the top goalies in Europe in the next five, six years. I didn't come as, 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 as the first goalkeeper. I think more like the second goalkeeper. But I believed in myself and I knew that uh, I, I know my qualities, you know. I came with the mindset to get the number one spot. So. I wouldn't care if it takes six months, if it takes one month, if it takes one year, if it takes two, year, two years, you know. Uh, I knew that I'm going to make it, I just had to be patient. Us as uh, reporters were surprised because we never heard of Maduka Okoya. So the first time I saw him, the first time I met him, I saw a good looking guy from Germany, only 21 years old then, with a great appearance, really athlete look, so I thought, well, I think he is a good goalie because the way he looks, it's great. He has everything a goalie must have. He's tall, brave. So uh, the, the first impression was good, but we also got Benjamin van Leer. Uh, there were no promises made. Uh, there were just the only promise they gave me is that, that they are honest and if you train good and train hard, you will get your chance. And this is what they did. They, they kept the promise and I trained hard, I trained well. Yeah, and then the other game was my first moment and it went quite good. We didn't win the match. And we lost in penalties, but I did a fantastic game. The coach gave me the next Eredivisie game and, and the next league game another chance. It didn't went that well. We lost, I think, 4-1. Um, but still had some good moments. And uh, yeah, I think it was enough for the coach yeah, to put me in for the starting 11 for the rest of the season. Yeah, I think, uh, to be honest, the actual goal of Sparta is to stay in the league, you know, to not go down. We had a fantastic season, we had a fantastic year together. I think we surprised the whole country with our eighth place, almost qualifying for Europa League, you know. I think nobody expected that. But uh, we had a great team and a great uh, training staff uh, with Hank Fraser. We had a for me the coach of the season and yeah, we showed our qualities and we had ups and downs and we also showed mental strength that we came out of, of our downs with big wins against big teams you know to reach the playoffs for european football for sparta is like unique if you spent the last 20 years on second tier or when you're in the eredivisie in, in the bottom of the eredivisie going into the first half of the league it's amazing it was amazing there was a big party at the end of the season before playoffs started because we're not used to that anymore so it's a great achievement also 
uh, responsible for that is Maduka Okoye. Because a goal scorer like Lenati with his goals, he gives us the points, he gives Sparta the points, but a goalie with great saves also gives Sparta the points. So there's this save of Maduka Okoye in the away game against VVV, that's incredible. The whole of the Netherlands talked about him from that moment on. We knew already he was good, but from VVV away, the whole, Net the whole Netherlands said, well, that's a good goalie. And from that moment on, he didn't make any mistakes anymore, only great saves. In Venlo, uh, they have this tunnel where you can't see anything that's happening. And usually when that happens, you have uh, supporters and noises that tell you what's going on. But we didn't at that time because the, the uh, seats were, were empty. I am walking down, it's 92 minutes maybe. Uh, we're 1-0 up. Uh, I have no idea what's happening, but I was a, a little relaxed. When I come from the tunnel, I uh, enter the pitch at our goal line, and at that same time, I see like, oh my god, the ball's going in, and, and there's Maduka with his best Tiger save he ever made. And he saved the day, he saved the game, and afterwards we lost one game in the next 10, I think. It was one of the best series Sparta has had. Uh, since I'm here, definitely the best in the Eredivisie. So uh, it was an incredible important save. It helped us climb the table. For this one, I wanted to get out, but then I saw I was a bit too late, so I had to get back in position quick as possible. I just had to get everything out of myself to, to get the ball from the line. You know, his performance, the way he, he goes out on, on, on high crosses, because in, in, in the early days we had a lot of good goalies, but the last couple of years not anymore. So it, there's a goalie now in the Netherlands who picks high cross out of the air. That's very unusual for us. So this big hand, tall guy, good looking in his black or green jersey. He surprised everybody. At first only the Sparta fans, but at the end the whole of the Netherlands. So in, in several reporters had to name their favorite squad from the league and in almost every squad I saw, Maduka Okoye was the goalkeeper. What are your ambitions for the next year? Um, yeah, of course, to, to improve again. Uh, I want to get better uh, from year to year. This is the dream, I think, of everybody to, to play international football, Champions League, Europa League. We tried it, but we didn't make it this time, but we have another season going, so we'll see what we can reach for next season. Did you have to choose between Germany or Nigeria to play for? Um, no, I, I didn't have to think about it because uh, I always wanted to play for Nigeria. It's a childhood dream. Always when my father been to Nigeria, he always came back with a lot of jerseys of Okocha or Martins, big players, you know. I didn't have to think about it to play for Nigeria because it's a decision of my heart, you know. When was the time, first time you went to Nigeria? Mm, when I was six, I was the first time in Nigeria with my father, with my mother and my brother. Then I haven't been there for almost 13 years, almost. And then I came back the first time with the national team, something special. Imagine leaving, leaving Nigeria when you're six and then coming back uh, as a national player. To be honest, I missed like, I think, six calls from him before I got, uh, got my first call up. I always got a call from, uh, from a French number and I was like, okay, who's calling, who's calling, who's calling? And then suddenly I picked up and it was the national coach of Nigeria. And um, yeah, of course he's German, so there's a special connection between me and him. I really, I really appreciate what he's done for me because it's not normal to invite a goalkeeper who's not professional yet for, for a national team and then a team like Nigeria, it's not something small, you know. So yeah, I think it was a gift from him for me and a chance he gave me. But the connection was, uh, yeah, was always good. Uh, I have six caps now, yeah. yeah. What is your dream with the national team? With the national team? To win the Africa Cup of Nations in January next year. Yeah, and coming far with the, with the World Cup. And yeah, there's a lot of quality in this team. So I believe in, in, in winning the AFCON. Maduka, mein Freund, viele Grüße aus der Heimat. Ich liebe dich, mein Bruder. Pass auf dich auf, bleib wie du bist. Du hast immer einen hinter dir stehen, der immer, immer für dich da ist. Ich liebe dich, mein Bruder. 227 for life. So, in English, it's like. I don't think I can explain what it is in English. It's like, take care, brother. Um, greetings from hometown and 
love you and uh, uh, be the person you are and I'll always be there for you. I think that's the best English translation, but it's, I can't explain like I can say it in German, you know. <laughs> Someday I asked him, hey, where are you from in Düsseldorf? From, from which area in Düsseldorf? From which part of the town? And he told me, hey, I'm from Oberbilk. So an Oberbilk, a not so nice area in Düsseldorf. It's a part of Düsseldorf with a lot of problems, with criminals and violence and so on. And everyone who's coming from there knows about violence on the street. And I was living there for many years. So we have directly connected because, because of our hood, you know. Young players, especially talented young players, the biggest problem for them is their mind or their false friends. Maduka comes from this area, so you have to see that there are not so much problems for him, you know. So I talked many times to him and that's how he became my younger brother. Because same area, uh, same background. He was born in Düsseldorf also. In childhood, he was also a fan of Fortuna Düsseldorf. We have the same background. So that's why I wanted to talk to him and, and, and show him the way. Don't let false friends influence you. So go straight, go your way. You have talent, but don't start to fly because of your talent. So stay grounded. Every time remember where you are from. That's the most important thing. Remember where you are from. I think he learned a lot of me from me, but I also learned from him. I'm 45 years old now, but I've learned from him about being a good human. So I had very difficult times in my life. I wasn't always the good guy, but I've learned from him how to, how to show respect, how to show heart, how to show love. So for me, it was always difficult to say to another guy, hey, my brother, I love you like this. He was so open-minded to me that for me, it was no problem to say brother to him or I love you. We, connect, we connected from the first talk together and we did some real deep talks. Uh, I had very bad times. I think it was two, three years ago, ago when uh, my mother had problems with cancer. And it was a time I knew every second Madhu will be there for me. So I can go to him every time and talk to him. And that helped me really a lot. And that's why I hope he knows that I'm always there for him.